Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to our daily creative challenge number nine. It's our last challenge. It's been amazing having you all here with me during these last two weeks. How's everybody doing? I'm looking at the chat and we have a lot of people, a lot of uh, recognizable names. Valadir, Mikhail, Michael, Aisi, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Jacqueline, Tim as usual, Sam, Josh, Robin, Mark, Gerard, Cindy, Anthony, and uh, Adobe Live. <laughs> Kamal, David, thank you so much for being here with me. We got Louis, Sunny again in Wales. It's sunny here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Maria, how's it going? Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I really, really appreciate you um, joining me, as I said, for the last nine challenges. Today is our very last challenge. How sad. <laughs> Hopefully I can be back again uh, with you guys soon. Um, before we get started, I want to mention that you do need to go to the behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop page and scroll to the very, very bottom. And in the top, uh, on the bottom right, you're going to see this box that reads animated graphics. And you will need to click on this Get Started button to download a PSD. And what we're going to do with this PSD is we're going to learn a little bit about animation in Photoshop. We're going to create an animated Instagram story. So we're going to create a video that you can export into Instagram so you can upload it to your stories. And I also want to point out that you can click on this button, Chat with the Community, or right up here, Chat with the Community. And that will take you into the Discord page, which is that one right there, where you can submit your work under the current challenge tab. As you can see, some people have been posting the work we did yesterday with the running shoes. This one's really, really cool. I like it. And the way this works is you can post something, you can post a question, and then either myself or one of the Adobe mentors or anyone else can comment. And you can say something like, great job, or you can answer their question. But anyway, um, you can come in here and check out all the stuff that people have been posting from the previous eight challenges. And when you complete today's challenge, you can post it in here as well. You can also go into uh, past challenges, ask a question, tips and tricks, a whole bunch of stuff. So check it out. The link to that is right up above my head, right there. Or if you're in the Daily Creative Challenge page, you can click on Chat with the Community there or here to get to the Discord page. So remember, come into Current Challenge and check out all the work that people have done. If you haven't completed a challenge, you feel free to come in here and post it. Um, there's a lot of stuff we've been working on. We've been working with making trans selecting transparent objects recreating the lion king text effect um blurry backgrounds a whole bunch of stuff for those of you that have been joining me for the whole challenge or most of the challenge i'd like to see in the chat which one was your favorite and why so yeah let me know in the chat which one you enjoyed i enjoy teaching all of them i'm just wondering which ones you guys uh, enjoy the most so yeah a whole bunch of cool stuff so as I said today, as I said for today, we need to go into the behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop page, scroll to the bottom of the page and under animated graphics, make sure that you download, get started so that you can download this PSD and we can work on this project together. These are Adobe stock images. You will, you can license them if you like. You can work on the watermark versions or just use your own images. Um, to be frank with you, the images are not important. It, these could be images of anything. The important thing about this stream is for you to understand the concepts and principles of using animation inside of Photoshop. So that's really what we're going to learn today. And like I said, you can apply it to this PSD or you can use your own images. It really doesn't matter. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. I've seen a lot of creative submissions on the Discord app page. So if you have something cool to show, I really like this one. <laughs> it's really, really cool. So if you have something cool to show, um, feel free to share it with us under the current challenge page. 
So let me just make sure that there are no questions in the chat. Um, all people are answering uh, my question, which is um, which challenge they like. So somebody wrote the background challenge, uh, Catherine. Uh, Catherine, I'm, I'm guessing that's the blur background. Um, all of them, but most with replacement background in the water bottle one. Diana, yeah. That's the one we did, I think, three days ago, four days ago. Uh, Anton, just like uh, Anton, like number one. Pretty cool. What was number one? I already forgot. <laughs> Let me go back into the behance.net. Oh, the, uh, adding a drawing effect from a photo. Yeah, we use filters for that. Cool. So far, number six, because I learned a lot of stuff with my uh, new stuff. But today's might be your new favorite. Uh, designing with masks. We use the uh, water bottle one. Number eight, which was yesterday, um, the shoe composite. So cool. Yeah. Everybody's got a different favorite one. I'm glad that a lot of you have resonated with different uh, challenges and you've enjoyed them and you've followed along. So why don't we just get started with Photoshop and um, work on today's challenge. So we're going to work with this document that you um, should have downloaded already or you can follow with your own images. It really doesn't matter. And as I said before, I'm using Adobe Stock Images. Um, but if I want to license them and get the full version, I can right click on them and select license image and I can just press confirm and get the full resolution image, the high res image so I can work with it. And I'll do the same for the soccer player license image. And click on confirm. And that should remove the watermark and we have the full resolution of this photo. Pretty cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm first going to set the canvas size to the appropriate width and height. So I'm going to go into image canvas size and this window will come up. And um, when I did that, when I moved that window, like all my chat windows went away. So I can't see you guys anymore. So let me bring those back so I can see um what you guys are saying sorry about that i gotta bring back photoshop and bring back the chat all right there you go you guys are back cool i can see you um so we have this canvas size window and you can just enter the width and height for the canvas that you want to make if you want to make an instagram story the width uh, is 1080 the height is 1920 and you can just press ok um, you can just click on, uh, click on proceed and Photoshop will adjust the canvas size. So now we have a tall canvas and all we need to do is take the background, press control T, command T on the Mac and click and drag on the corner handles to scale it up and you can place it wherever you like. I'm just going to place it right here, a little off center. And then I can take my soccer player and I can place them around accordingly or move them around. It really doesn't matter. For now, all I'm going to do is um, simply duplicate the layer by clicking and dragging it into the new layer icon. Or you can press Control J, Command J on the Mac, whatever works for you. And I can just call this layer soccer ball. And we'll mask the soccer ball first. I'm just going to go into the elliptical marquee tool click and drag to make a rectangle, uh, circular selection. And with the space bar, you can click and drag as, as, as you create the selection. So I'm making my selection. I can hold the space bar and move the selection and continue making it. So I'm just going to try to get the soccer ball as best as I can, something like that. I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge the selection. And when I'm happy with the positioning of the selection, I can just click on the new layer mask icon to make um, a mask and now I can place this ball anywhere I want. I can also, um, <coughs> excuse me, I can also do the same thing for the soccer player and um, let me get a little water here. I can, <coughs> excuse me, I can also do the same thing for the soccer player. I can um, use the quick selection tool and click and drag to select them or I can use a new select subject feature in the latest versions of Photoshop. So you can click on select subject and Photoshop does a really good job of selecting the soccer player. You may need to fine tune it a little bit so you can click and drag to add to the selection 
or you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, to subtract from the selection. In this case, it did a really good job. I can come in and fine tune it later if I need to. So all I'm gonna do is just click on the layer mask icon. So now we have our soccer player and we have, um, we can place them anywhere we want and we can control the ball independently. So we can get it really close to them or really further away, or we can even rotate the soccer player by pressing Control T on Windows, Command T on the Mac, and clicking and dragging to rotate, and now he's doing more of a, of a bicycle kick. So it's totally up to you how you, how you position it, uh, the soccer player. What I'm gonna do now is start working on the animation. And to animate in Photoshop, you need to work with the timeline panel. And to do so, you need to go into Window and Timeline. And it will open up this Timeline panel here at the bottom. And I'm going to click on Create Video Timeline. Um, if you see Create Frame Animation, make sure you just click on this drop down and click on Create Video Timeline. And we have a video timeline. <laughs> and you can scrub through the playhead and nothing happens, right? Because we haven't made any changes. Or we can click and drag on for example, the soccer ball. So this layer, video layer, controls the soccer ball. So there's no soccer ball, no soccer ball, no soccer ball. When we get to about a second, the soccer ball appears. So that's um, a really, really simple explanation of how these um, video layers work. You can just adjust where they come in into the frame by clicking and dragging on the start point or end point. And then you can move those around as well if you want to. So I can click and drag them around. But I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to point it out so that you can do it in your animation if you need to. The next um, thing I want to talk about really quickly here is um, keyframes. So I'm just going to click on this down pointing arrow. And there's all these different keyframes. And you can start a keyframe by just clicking on this little stopwatch and this little yellow point appears. So what I'll do is I'll just start with the soccer ball here. And this is just for the example. I'm not really, I'm probably not going to like keep this animation. I just want to show you how it works, right? So we have the start point of the soccer ball here. And I clicked on this little stopwatch and added this little yellow point. I can scrub to one second and I can move the soccer ball. We'll move it here. I can go into two seconds. Oops, I started moving the timeline. I can go into two seconds and move the soccer ball over here. And notice that as I'm moving the ball, Photoshop automatically starts adding those keyframes, right? So now it animates, um, I actually needed to animate the mask. So just to make sure that um, you don't run the, uh, have the same problem that I did there is, um, I should have done one extra step, sorry about that. I got a little carried away here. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna right click and convert it into a smart object so that we don't have to worry about uh, about that mask. See how the mask um, keyframes are no longer there? You could also animate the mask and I just wanted to make this a little simpler so that um, I didn't have to anim animate the mask. I'm just using the soccer ball um, right now. And I'm also gonna right click and convert this layer into a smart object so that I don't have to worry about the mask. But the mask could be animated if you want to. That's probably a little too advanced for this. Um, stream, but I'll do that again. I'll start up here. I'll select transform, which includes both um, like, you know, scale and position. So I'm going to scale it up and then I'm going to go into one second, move it here and maybe I'll scale it down. And then I'll go into two seconds here. And now the soccer ball should move. See that? See how, is, how the soccer ball is moving? If I hit the space bar, it looks like the soccer ball is just hitting the corners of the of the edge of the canvas. So if I were to go into like number three here and then move it down even lower to here, you'll see that effect. And I'll double click on the hand tool so you can see it. And see how we change the scale of the ball? First of all, it was really big up here. So it actually creates the illusion that it's going, that it's moving in 3D space. So we can move it like so. And we could also, can we move uh, move a bit to the middle so we can see the timeline? I'm not sure what that question was, but I'll make it a little larger, I guess. I, I mean, this is probably as big as I can make it. But um, anyway, so the point is, is that you could adjust the transformation, which includes the scale and rotation. Another thing that I didn't do is I could come in here, for example, um, click on that, on that point to select it. 
and then I can press Control T Command T to transform and I can rotate it and then I can come into this one uh, press Control T or uh, one thing I should mention is if I'm if I'm on a sorry about that guys let me put it back down here there we go um, if I'm on a on a keyframe like this one here I can click on these white arrows to move on to the next one so I'm on the next one now and with that layer selected I can press Control T Command T to transform I can rotate it again and now the soccer ball should rotate as as it's moving so see that so we can control all these different properties so you can create some really really cool animations which is why I was saying earlier that I'm really looking forward to see what you come up with because you don't have to use these images you're gonna use your own images and you're gonna come up with some really cool ideas and I can't wait to see them the other thing that you can control is opacity so we start with opacity at 100% and um, we end with opacity say at zero you'll notice how the soccer ball will disappear as it animates see that pretty cool stuff <clears throat> and then we have um, layer styles so if in the first uh, keyframe oh by the way you can click and drag on these keyframe, keyframes if you want to so I just want to put them all there in the beginning so we have this layer style and if I were to double click on the side of the layer and add a layer style maybe like a um, color overlay and we'll just change the color of the soccer ball to we'll say yellow and then at the very end we can double click on color overlay again and we can change it to maybe red then you should see a transition between the ball see how it it goes from yellow to red and it might be a little difficult to see because of the opacity that, that we set on the previous keyframe so I can select that opacity bring it back up to 100% and now you should see the um, animation that goes from yellow to red pretty cool stuff so as you can see there's a lot of different properties that you can adjust and make changes and customize them any way that you want I only just use one layer style but remember you have a whole bunch of different layer styles that you can apply you can apply all these different layer styles and animate them in a whole bunch of different ways you can truly spend hours fine-tuning um, all these different properties and create really really cool animations um, so I hope that you like the um, oh I see what the problem is my head is blocking the, the panel sorry about that guys I didn't realize that my head was all over the panel um, yep there we go <laughs> So there we go. So there's um I hope that that was better. I hope that fixes the problem. I, I didn't I didn't I forgot that my head was like on that side of the um <laughs> of the timeline. But basically I was talking about um these three properties that you can adjust with the um with the layers and uh, video layers. So what I'm going to do now is double click on the hand tool just so that you can see the entire animation. And I'm looking at the time, so I'm just going to keep this animation even though this is not the one I was planning, but it's an animation nevertheless so there's our animation right and I'm also gonna animate the soccer player just really quickly and we'll just do a for funsies um, animation I'll just press Control T command T to transform and I'll do the same I'll scale him down a little bit and um, I'll move towards the end of the animation and I'll transform him again and I'll make him larger and this time I'll rotate him so he's he is rotating to do that bicycle kick so that's my animation he missed the ball he was going for the ball and he just missed it unfortunately but anyway this is gonna be our animation and what I'm gonna do now is simply um, select these late these video layers right here and I can put them into a group control G command G in the back and notice how I'm organizing now my video layers and I can bring in the endpoint of the animation here, like so. And now I have this. And I can actually stop maybe like one or two frames before the ball stops. So then there's not such a hard stop on that ball at the end of the animation. See that? And now I could add, um, I could add a solid color fill layer and we'll just make it I don't know like a dark red the color doesn't matter and I am also going to add a text layer and then maybe we're advertising one of our soccer games so we can just um, 
create the text layer, make the text white so that we can read it, and then just type something like um, watch our game, and then we can put in the date or a whole bunch of stuff. It, it really doesn't matter. So watch our game, not out game, our game. Um, and I think, does that say, oh my God, I still pressed the wrong key, Jesus. Um, I still can't get it right. There we go, our game. So the reason that I created this text later was to show you that we can go from from just a bunch of uh, uh, essentially a composite. We can go, we can animate a composite, and then we can switch to just any something else just by pushing the video layer past where the original layer started. See that, like right here, that's where they stop. And what you need to do now is. Uh, select the watch our game video layer and you'll see that we have a whole bunch more options what I'll do now is I'll just make this text larger and maybe I'll style it a little bit watch our game um, here's a, a trick for you guys if if you're ever working with text and you want to space out two characters you can hold the alt key on windows um, and then use the arrow keys on the keyboard so alt key on windows option key on the Mac click in between two letters and then you can use the left key to get them closer or the right key on the keyboard to spread them apart so that's uh something that, that i just thought about that i wanted to show you guys and um maybe i'll just change this to like light and make it smaller it really doesn't matter i just want to get a little bit of a bit of, of a style on here and um i know that's not looking super awesome but it'll work i'm also looking at the time because i know we don't have much more but um what i wanted to show you guys is that we can we actually have a text warp um, keyframe so we can click on text warp and then press Control T command T to transform and then we have this little icon here the text warp icon that allows you to change the warp of the text so we do on arch for example and then move the keyframe uh, commit the changes and then move the keyframe over here press Control T command T to transform again do that same process but then now maybe change the bend to the other side, that bend uh, will animate. See that? Pretty cool. So then our animation can go from the ball to the soccer player, switches over to the graphic that we created to advertise the date and time of the game. And um, that's our animation. Again, I'm looking at the time and we don't have much time. We should do daily creative challenges that are like three hours. I think that'll be enough to complete something like this. Um, but again, the point of this uh, stream is for, is for you to see all these different tools and how they're very, very easy to use. Everything is non-destructive. You can always delete um, the keyframes if you just decide not to have an, an, uh, an animation and you just want a static graphic. That's totally cool. But again, the options are all here. They're very easy to use just using keyframes. Remember to create a keyframe. You uh, To start uh, creating keyframes, you need, do need to click on the stopwatch. And then you can, then from that point, anytime you adjust that property, in this case, the transformation property, a new keyframe will be added automatically. So be careful with the playhead because you might accidentally create uh, keyframes when you don't intend to. Um, so the final step will be to export the video. And to do that, you got to click on this icon here, the flyout menu, and select render video. And from here, uh, a good option will be uh, .mp4. Click on render. Photoshop will render this animation as a video. And you can take that video file and uh, import it into Instagram. And uh, talking about Instagram, if you want to follow me on Instagram and then say hello now that the streams are over you can go into uh, jr from ptc that's my instagram page and you can see all the kind of different things that i post i do a lot of traveling so you'll see travel photos also lately on planes i've been using um, adobe lightroom cc the mobile version and just editing my travel photos so that's a before and after so i post a lot of those um this was taken in toronto canada i just saw this cool store with where they had a uh, the joker just sitting out front so i took a picture of him and and that was the edit. Uh, obviously, I post images related to my tutorials. This is the tutorial that I did on you, that you can watch on YouTube on color grading, something similar to what we did here a couple days ago. 
So yeah, remember to uh, follow me on Instagram and also on Behance. It's the same screen name, JR from PTC on Behance. Remember to go into the Discord app and submit your work and you can get to it by going onto that page right there, right above my head. So check it out. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for being with me. I really, really appreciate you guys spending all this time with me. Um, unfortunately, I have to get going. I just want to say bye to everybody who is here now. Mark, uh, Lena, Anton, Sam, Diana. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other people here whose names I'm not going to be able to read. But thank you, thank you so much for being uh, here with me. I really appreciate it. Um, say hi to me on Discord. Say hi to me on Instagram. And also, if you like, you can go into my YouTube channel. I have a whole bunch of tutorials that you can watch for free. So check those out. Thank you so much for joining me in these last two weeks. I look forward to coming back with you and showing you some more cool Photoshop tips and tricks. Um, again, go into the Discord page and submit your work. I look forward to seeing the animations that you create. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys next time. See you guys.